Hi everybody, welcome back to another Cheapo Meter Review. Yes, it's Cheapo Meter Review time, and I'm so happy. Today we're looking at the all new, all new, and it's all new. Yes, it's the B-Side ADMS7 Smart Multimeter True RMS, 6,000 counts of pocket-sized goodness. Let's take a look. Now the B-Side does ship in various incarnations. You will see this meter listed under other brands. Um, so yeah, take note, it is one and the same, different name, but it is the same meter. Today we're looking specifically at the B-Side. ADM S7 is what they call this little guy. And when I say little, I ain't kidding. Yes, this is a small pocket multimeter that will fit ever so snug in the back of your pants, or maybe in your front pocket or your shirt pocket. Hey, wherever you wanna put it, it's small enough to take anywhere. Right off the get-go, a few things to point out. First of all, the leads are permanently attached to the multimeter. So yeah, these guys are with you wherever they go, and there is no sort of storage mechanism for the leads. They are just sort of... The lead wire is rated at 1,000 volts and has a gauge rating of AWG 23. Hmm. Body itself feels honestly a little on the plasticky side, AKA the cheap side, but you know, eh, it's a cheapo multimeter, I guess, but definitely um, does not exude quality. Now this is truly an auto ranging meter. It does everything on its own. Basically, you plug and play. In this case, probably plug and pray, yes, because, well, uh, the B-Side ADMS 7 does not have your typical front-facing look. No, there is no selector switch here. It is strictly push-button oriented and not a lot of features. Starting at the top left, we have the on-off power button. In the middle, you have the voltage alert and live indicator. On the bottom left, we have the hold button. This is just a standard touch hold, nothing fancy going on here. And last and least, on the bottom right, we have the flashlight. The bottom you can see they have the CAT2 600 volt rating as well as the CAT3 300 volt. Now this meter has a very limited number of ranges, volts AC and DC. Now we do have a limited number of features. The volts go from 600 volts on the AC and DC ranges. For resistance, it is a very, very sad 6,000 ohm. For frequency, we have 40 hertz to 1,000 hertz. And finally, continuity, which will kick in once there is a resistance of 30 ohms or less. The saving grace on this meter is the display. It is large. It is very, very nice and crisp, quite contrasty. Unfortunately, there is no backlight, so you're gonna have a tough time when the lights Dim. You're gonna get this party started in DC at 250 millivolts. And as you can see, unfortunately, this meter is not capable of reading any lower than half a volt. So no can do for the 250 millivolt. Let's try the 2.50 volt. And that one is coming up spot on 2.5 volts. Next up, it's continuity. Now, unfortunately, because these are solder directly to the meter. We're only gonna use these for the continuity test. Here we go. Well, extremely slow, latched. But oh, so painfully slow. Eh. Seventy-two point one decibels is the maximum loudness in terms of continuity. Now, is it just me, or don't these two look absolutely adorable together? Oh, so sweet! Already, we're gonna do a quick voltage test. I've got it up against an Anning and eighty-two oh three, and let's see how accurate this little guy is. Here we go. Remember, this thing cannot see any higher than half a volt, so we're gonna start at around one point five volts, and let's start taking it up. Going up to right now 5.5 volts. Showing us 5.6 in the ending. 5. Oh, it's fluttering there on that uh, B side. Take it up, up and away. Here we go. Now we're gonna rest at 
Let's do 10.5 volts. 10.6 for the B side. I'm sorry, 10.6 for the Anang. 10 point. Wow, there are a lot of flutter. Um, I'm not liking that. It just, just does not want to settle on a range. We're showing 10 all over the place for the B side. Here we go, up and away. We are going to go up to 24 volts even. 24.1 for the Anang. 24 point. Is it going to settle? Whoa, wow. Let's just say 24 point something for the B side. And let's max it out now at 31.6 volts. 31.67 for the Anang. 31.678678 something. 31 point something for the B side. Wow. Very interesting. So, uh, you know, a little a little disappointing. Um, I do not like the fact that it just cannot settle on a range. Um, not too happy with that showing at all. Now also we have a, a bar graph scale. And as you can see, really in terms of verbosity, not a lot going on there either. So, oh wow, you know in the voltage department, eh, I gotta say I'm not too impressed. Definitely this one goes to the Anning. Now in terms of resistance, what you're looking at is it. That's it, a maximum of 6,000 ohm. This meter cannot do any better. No, if we just take it up a notch, we are out of luck. So, oh, wow, really poor resistance range. 121 volts AC looks good to me. The nice thing about this display is the fact that right away you do see your frequency at the same time, 60 hertz, very nice. Now we're going to try the voltage alert mode. Uh, basically what that is, you hold down on the button and so another word for non-contact voltage and it works all right. Live detection, we've got the probe in hand, let's take our hot power lead and finally the b-side ships with a flashlight simply to press on the button and lo and behold we can see we can see now there's no time light on this flashlight it will stay lit until you turn it off Next up is a high voltage test for the B-side. Let's see if it can handle at least 600 volts. It's rated capacity. Here we go. Indeed it can. We are around 610 volts. There is no audible indicator of any sort or any sort of high voltage um, symbol coming on the screen. But that being said, it is able to take its maximum DC voltage without any problems. That's it in terms of the overall functionality. So now let's take a look on the inside. The inside of the B side, and as you can see, not a whole lot going on. Remember this meter does not do current, not even milliamps. So yeah, it's gonna be pretty sparse to begin with. Starting at the bottom here, we have a couple of those coin cell type batteries. These ones are three volt lithiums, and that is what is powering the meter. We have one lonely PTC over here beside the uh, positive input. And that is about it in terms of voltage protection. We do have one uh, diode rectifier here. Looks like there's a transistor clamp going on as well. Um, some melts and over here we have the Cobb IC and that is the top flashlight LED. Basically that is it. So this is a pretty sparse meter internal and um, yeah, you know, I really wasn't expecting to see anything special. As well, in terms of the overall fit and finish, there is some flux residue going on, but you know, I've definitely seen a lot worse. Another thing I'm not too happy about, if I'm gonna nitpick, would be the uh, input terminals. They are soldered rather on the poor side, and I'll probably touch those up. In terms of stress relief, yeah, no pull dancers here. No, what we have is strictly this little plastic nodule. Uh, separating the positive and negative terminal. And on the other side of the PCB, we have our little speaker over here, and these are the push buttons for the soft button touch on the front face of the meter. Here we have the uh, connectors that feed the LCD display, and that's about it. It's a really, really thin PCB. 
Here's the actual display itself. Um, nice and big, and there's the Elastomar zebra strip, whatever you want to call it. And that is what interfaces with the PCB to feed the display. So yeah, really not a whole lot to this meter. Um, I'm gonna put it all back together and come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the B-Side ADM S7. Oh, personally, I would flip it to the A-Side. Yeah, I'm not liking this multimeter, not liking it at all. No, it just didn't do anything for me. In fact, that's because it just doesn't do anything. I mean, sure, if you want to test a battery, okay, yeah, but really? I was really looking forward to this meter when it first came out. Um, it had a lot of potential, at least I thought so. I like the big, bold display, but you know, once I actually had it in my hands, Oh, I was so disappointed. Yeah, the display is nice, but at times it is hard to see and there is no backlight. I do like the dual display, excellent feature, but once again, it is very, very slow. Refresh rate is extremely slow, about half a second, and oh, I don't know, it just, just doesn't grab me at all. This meter doesn't have a whole lot of purpose. It looks good, it looks trendy, but at the end of the day, you're really not going to find it very useful. I'm going to give the B-Side ADM-S7 a very, very sad 1.5 stars. Hope you enjoyed this multimeter review, cheapo multimeter review at that. As always, love bringing them to you. Keep up those comments, feedback. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video, and if you don't, oh damn it, give me a thumbs up anyway. No, no, I mean, whatever you want to do. It is all good. Till the next time. Keep on testing.